All right, so CES is currently on over in the States and some of the gaming monitors that have been announced are absolutely insane. Like monitors that I just did not expect to come out for at least another year, they'll be here within the next couple of months. And I mean, let's just start with the OLED displays that were announced from LG. And the one that I'm most excited for personally is a 27 inch 1440p OLED panel, which can run at 240 Hertz. So basically, you know, what we're looking at here is an OLED panel packaged into a form factor and resolution that most of us actually want to use as opposed to TVs and massive ultra wide displays. For those of you who don't know why this is so exciting, two main things, instant response times and a super high contrast ratio. Now I've tested a couple of really fast gaming monitors recently, the 360Hz 1440p from Asus, which I'm currently using as my main, and there's also the BenQ 360Hz TN. Both of these monitors have average response times of about one and a half milliseconds, which is blazingly quick. Most good gaming monitors are about, you know, four to five milliseconds in terms of response times. So one and a half milliseconds, that's really damn fast with quite minimal motion blur. OLED on the other hand, cuts that down to zero. That practically means zero ghosting, a much more responsive feeling input, and it's something that I can't wait to test out. Combine that with the higher contrast ratio and superior colors that you can achieve on an OLED panel, I'm expecting these to be a pretty substantial leap forward for gaming monitors. Ironically, OLED is the best panel technology for fast paced games, competitive games, games which are typically played on a 25 inch or a 27 inch monitor, but up until now, it's not been available. It's only been available on TVs, you know, really large kind of desktop monitors like 42 inch and 48 inch and at the very smallest big ultra wide displays. This year though, actually in the next couple of months, we'll be able to see what that OLED panel technology is like in that smaller 27 inch form factor. And personally, I think it's going to be a game changer. There is one big catch here though, and that's screen burn-in, the results of pixels displaying the same static color for an extended period of time. So if you're someone who plays a lot of one specific game, which to be honest is most of us, this could potentially be a big, big problem. Static elements on your screen like a crosshair or HUD elements, for example, definitely prone to burn in on these OLED panels, but more on this in just a minute. So the 27 inch 240 Hz 1440p, LG are calling it the 27GR95QE-B, very appealing name as usual. It's a thousand bucks, which it seems to be actually fair given their technology, but depending on how good it is in reality, and it's actually available for pre-order at the moment. As usual though, I'd always recommend waiting for full reviews, which hopefully mine is not too far away. Now it looks like Asus have also taken this same 27 inch OLED panel and implemented it into one of their monitors, which they're calling the PG27 AQDM. Again, big selling point here is that we finally have that OLED technology in a 27 inch 240 Hz form factor. Asus's model visually looks very similar to LG's, most notably those bezels are ridiculously small. Now it's borderline false advertising what Asus have done here and you know other monitor companies do it as well. They make the bezels look extremely thin but in reality they're not that small. They are still very very small as you can see in this video here but not like groundbreakingly thin as some of the marketing material would have you believe. Calling these OLED panels though might be a bit of a challenge. I suspect both LG and Asus will have some active cooling implements implemented here, but hopefully the fans aren't too loud. Both monitors seem to have a fairly boxy looking heatsink and cooling element towards the back and center of the display. Now just coming back to the burn-in problem on OLED panels, we get a little sneak peek of some of the features that are included on the new ASUS OLED to help prevent this as shown by the OSD. Again, burn-in is caused by static elements displayed over an extended period. And so here we have some features to help mitigate and prevent that. So things like screen dimming, pixel cleaning, a pixel cleaning reminder, and you've also got a pixel shifting feature which we've seen on previous OLED panels. So hopefully these features are enough to prevent burn-in on these OLED panels or at least mitigate it to the point where you don't actually notice it in day-to-day -day use because you know I don't want to be on my desktop or on like Twitter or something and see a crosshair in the middle or like a health bar in the bottom left. That would be very, very distracting. And it's also one of these things that only time will tell you know, how bad potentially the burn-in can get on these OLED panels. Even after a full review, after a week or two of using it, I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell you whether burn-in is an issue. Now, some of you might remember, I actually bought an LG OLED over two years ago. That was their 65 inch CX, and I'm still using that today. It's a 4K OLED. LED TV, which has a 120 Hertz variable refresh rate. And so far on that one, absolutely zero burn-in, like none whatsoever. 
At the same time, the games that I've played on that TV and the stuff that I watch on it is highly varied. Like I'll play a single player game, which usually takes 15 to 20 hours. I'll finish it and then I'll move on to something different. For a desktop monitor though, which is what these next gen OLEDs are going to be used for, you'd be using them very differently. And the potential for burn in there is much, much greater. Now, if 27 inches isn't really your thing, LG have announced another 240 Hz OLED, but I don't think this one will be as popular. It's got a 3440 by 1440 p resolution, but across a pretty massive 45 inch panel. So the pixel density here is really not that good. 3440 by 1440, we're definitely used to having that across say a 34 inch panel, not 45 inches. So I think for racing sims, this could be pretty cool. The curve on the panel is also pretty aggressive with an 800 R curve, and you probably wouldn't be playing those games at more than 3440 by 1440 anyway. As a desktop monitor and work display though, I feel like that low pixel density would be pretty annoying. But if that's the kind of monitor that you're into, you'll also have another couple of options from Samsung. One of them being the OLED G9, which is 49 inches, 32 by 9, and has a resolution of 7680 by 2160. So basically, it's like having two 4K monitors side by side. Honestly, if the implementation is good here, it might just replace my current dual 4K monitor setup because this thing looks pretty insane. 2023 will also be the first year of 500 Hertz panels. Asus have announced the new 540 Hertz PG248QP, which at least in terms of refresh rate, is the fastest gaming monitor in the world. It is, however, only 1080p and uses a TN panel. I am, though, pretty interested in testing it out, especially for games like Overwatch, which can consistently run at those sort of frames. I'm not sure if this is replacing the 500Hz monitor that they announced mid last year, but it's at least pretty different on the exterior and has a different name. Also joining the 500Hz party is the Alienware AQ2524. Again, 1080p, although this one is supposedly IPS, as opposed to TN, and I actually do think there is a market for these monitors. There are plenty of passionate esports enthusiasts out there who only play Valorant, CS, Rainbow Six, Overwatch, and really couldn't care for more than 1080p resolution. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting discussion to say the least. Is it better to go with a 240Hz OLED or a 500Hz IPS or TN if you want the fastest and crispiest experience? 240Hz OLED, believe it or not, is kind of looking like the better option, which yeah, it's a lower refresh rate, but you're cutting the response times down to zero milliseconds, which potentially would give you a faster input experience as well, again, despite that slightly lower refresh rate. Not only that, but the visual experience and enhancement of an OLED panel with true blacks and a ridiculous 99% DCI-P3 coverage, that should be no contest in terms of image quality, at least versus IPS and TN. Now, of course, we'll have to wait until I have them both here in the studio, and that way I can share my thoughts on 500 hertz versus these 240 hertz OLEDs, but hopefully that won't be too much longer, at least for the OLEDs, which seem to be coming out in the next couple of months. And yeah, those do seem to be the ones that I'm most excited for, those 27-inch 1440p 240Hz panels. I mean, man, I would go as far as saying that that's probably the one piece of tech that I'm most excited for this year. I think on the hardware side, we're pretty covered. Like, CPUs don't seem to be getting that much faster. GPUs are already blazingly quick and have really outpaced monitor technology to begin with, but these 240Hz OLED panels, I mean, the monitors in 2023 are just going to be different. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed this kind of quick thoughts video of some of the insane gaming monitors that are coming out this year. Uh, I'd usually link them down below, but they don't exist yet, so don't bother looking there. Uh, at least though, you can subscribe if you haven't already, because I will be testing out as many of these OLED panels and gaming monitors as I can get my hands on. So definitely stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.